Good morning. Just got back from a walk around our complex, around our neighborhood, and um, noticed the haze, kind of a pinkish, orangish um, sky and sidewalk um, from the fires. California is part of that whole West Coast area with all these fires going on, and it occurred to me how much stuff is going on. Here we have the fires raging with smoke and particulates and all that kind of thing, reminding us of being here 30, 40 years ago where this was more than normal with all the smog and so on. But we have the fires going on and the coronavirus is still raging around, taking its toll. Um, politics with the presidential election coming up. Today is 9-11, so remembering that part of it, um, the social issues that um, are very strong right now and pregnant with possibilities, but also causing tension. So think of all the stuff going on and how easy it is to become overwhelmed by it trying to pay attention to everything. <clears throat> so uh, it is easy for me to be a bit overwhelmed by it. Like every place I turn, there's another crisis going on with all the other things going along with it, with the businesses shut down and unemployment and people struggling that way. So overwhelmed, another feeling that I have is disappointment. I'm watching people's reactions to this and have to almost search for compassion for those that are being displaced by the fires or those that are really suffering from the virus. Um, people that don't have work and they're searching. And I, I search for and um, yearn for compassion or pulling together on it, but what I see much of is self-interest. How does this affect me, be it as simple as <clears throat> um, I hate wearing a mask and anger over that or arguing over who's putting what restrictions on, all those kinds of things. So self-interest and then blaming. A lot of pointing fingers at somebody and say, well, um, it's climate change for the fires or it's mismanagement by federal agencies or too many <clears throat> suburbanites, urban people moving into areas, just pointing at every, everybody and so on. So all these feelings can come out there. And one of the ways I am coping with it or getting past it is to label a lot of these things as a virus. So there's a virus of blame going around that um, I need to be careful to not catch or a virus of being overwhelmed, becoming negative or angry or frustrated and not wanting to catch that virus. So it's like taking a walk this morning, wore a mask to walk around the area because we're in a seniors complex and I want to be very careful to not only not catch it myself, but more importantly, to make sure that if I was asymptomatic, that I wouldn't pass it on. So I, I wear a, <clears throat> excuse me, I wear a virus, or if we go to eat out someplace, we're on a patio, open, open area patio, just to be safe. <clears throat> Even if a gym opens up, we'll continue <clears throat> exercising and walking here. So using that same analogy that I want to be aware, I want to stay in touch, I want to um, be aware of what's happening with people, what's happening in politics, what's happening you know, with the, with the coronavirus. I want to stay in touch, but I don't want to catch the virus, and I don't want to catch any of several viruses. Um, instead, I want to hold that quiet place. If I'm looking for compassion toward victims, let's say, and, and I suppose that people who are angry and frustrated and blaming and 
and angry over who's doing what or who's saying what. I suppose they're, they need compassion as much as, as others as well. So it's finding that place of compassion, which is my morning rituals and pausing and remembering to breathe and having my meditation, my, my um, contemplative prayer time. It's um, doing the journaling to get make sure that that center of compassion is there, but then also wearing the mask. So it's, I don't like the term social distancing. distancing. I prefer physical distancing. So it's somehow emotionally distancing myself from those viruses, but at the same time staying connected. So I hope you're finding a way to stay connected, but to also have that separation from the anger, the rage, the frustration, the, the overwhelming self-interest, how does this affect me, moving into how does this affect us, how does it affect all, and from my biblical roots, especially how does this affect the, the poor and disenfranchised, the way I read um, the biblical text. So I encourage you to think that through. What kind of um, protection can you employ, can you develop, can you nurture to keep you from these negative viruses that only divide and, and um, cause even more tension than there is? So let's, let's do that together. Points of calm, points of caring, points of compassion, but not from isolation, from a connected place. And putting those two together, connected but not overly engaged by it, that is an amazing thing to accomplish, to live from. So, but I think our world, our culture, especially in this time for the rest of this calendar year, 2020, could really use more points like this more centers of calm and compassion. Let's do that together. Talk to you later.